uh, as we move forward, what do you think healthcare providers can do better in management of patients with cancer? And uh, tied to that, uh, just a message of hope to patients who are living with cancer and also to their families. Uh, there are several things that the healthcare providers and the healthcare system can do to, to help patients and also, and also for patients and their family to feel hope. One of the things that cancer does, it's just more than a disease. I think there's a, a certain perception and burden that comes when people hear of the word cancer. And like we said, there's something that, it's like the body has failed the patient, okay, or the person. The cells are supposed to be in a certain way, but because of various issues, it, it's not working. So, so a patient who is receiving a diagnosis of cancer from that, from how it is communicated, is something that healthcare workers can do. And one of the things that we can learn is uh, to have centers of excellence for cancer care. Cancer is not like any other disease. Right from the way the patient would walk into the gate, from the person they meet and greet, to the receptionist, registration, there are a lot of psychosocial issues that come with the diagnosis of cancer. For example, a pancreatic cancer, cancer, uh, cancer of the pancreas, is, if it's an advanced stage, is just similar to a patient who has heart failure with an abnormal valve, okay? So their life expectancy is similar. But the person who has heart failure would go home and the way they would relate to the family would be different from the same person who had pancreatic cancer would, would somehow feel that my life is coming to an end, this is a death sentence. So I think we as healthcare providers, we need to update our knowledge on the different types of cancers and the outcomes and even how we communicate to the patient that you have this cancer. But that does not mean it's the end of your life. There are things you can do, you can still enjoy life with your family, you can plan, you can seek the various treatment, be it surgery, radiotherapy, or, or chemotherapy, and times a combination of both and give them hope. And not just win hope, but hope based on what we have seen and what we have learned. And I think that is really key as healthcare providers. So when we have the results back from a biopsy that shows the patient has cancer, and that is the first time you're telling them, I think it is important to get a counselor involved. At times you can be in a busy clinic or you may not have enough time to talk to them, but that is really key. They do it in the HIV world. When someone is being told they're HIV positive, it's not just the doctor who tells them. It's the counselor who sits with them and they talk to them, and that gives them hope that they can take medication and they come a long way more than 20 years of, and there are lessons we can learn from what the diagnosis of HIV is being done to patients in a compassionate way, in a way that they would understand and ask questions. So cancer is one of those things that healthcare providers really need to work on in how we communicate and how we give that message to patients. So, and for the patients and their families, it is a huge burden financially, uh, but thankfully, the insurance is helpful in many ways. But there are psychosocial issues of how do we tell the community, but how and and many other things. I think it is one of those things that we always want to give hope that if it's an advanced stage, then we may just aim for palliation or for pain control. If they are comfortable, they can still you know eat well and take them around even for games, even for elderly, visit people, have family come and just distract their minds from the cancer. But if it's an early stage, if you want to that is treatable, you want to be aggressive in following it up and getting the right care, you can get treatment. We believe early diagnosis, I think that's the message you're sharing. If you can get it early through screening or through when you have symptoms, you get it early stages, then you can aim for cure. But your cure is not possible you can still aim for a comfortable life, even with the disease. Without that, I think the other organizations which can support, like Faraja Cancer Support, they are, if you check it, Faraja Cancer Support in Kenya, they have abilities to help cancer patients through their stresses, through their difficulties, and I think it is a resource that I found helpful when I recommend to patients. Thank you so much, Dr. Ari, for that elaborate discussion. Uh, there's a conversation that is happening in our country about making cancer a national disaster. What are your thoughts on that? And tied to that, you can just have your final thoughts about cancer.
it, it's a valid question. We have had this conversation of cancer for a while to the country. And uh, my opinion is at this point, I think at that level where it would help if it's declared a national disaster. Because uh, 20 years ago, in 1999, then President Moy declared HIV and AIDS a national disaster. <coughs> what that does is it brings awareness to this condition and it brings concerted efforts. So everyone is keen in this, a lot of funding goes into it, people follow results and say, okay, from the basic things, for example, how many cervical cancer cases do we have in Kenya? We have estimates. We do not have an exact number. Okay. So once it's a national disaster, then there will be a lot of effort into screening, into detection, and diagnosis, and treatment. In 1999, HIV prevalence in Kenya was about 15%. When you look at 20 years later, we have reduced that number more than 200%. We are now at 4.9, around 5%. Within a 20 year period, a uh, disease which was previously thought to be fatal, we have had great strides, and now people who are born with HIV now are getting to their 30s. They have been taking medication since birth. The people who are here in the 90s would not think that is possible, but because it was made a national disaster, a lot of effort was put into it in the treatment and screening and even prevention. People would be more aware how do we prevent this disease. And I think once it is a national disaster, then the efforts which are there, because we have a lot of effort now, we have to appreciate the Ministry of Health, whatever they're doing, and through the big four, we also have all these professional bodies, the Kesho, the Kenya Society of Hematology and Oncology. I've done a lot of advocacy in regard to cancer, but I think we're at that point where it needs to get national attention. And once it has national attention, efforts and money will go into it, and everyone will feel that this is something that we are working on. Because we still have treatment modalities which are not available in Kenya. People have to go to India, a huge burden, and sometimes UK or South Africa. And those things can be available here once we put effort and declare it's a national disaster. Our national interest, like the interest of Kenya is at hand. We need to fight cancer, otherwise we are losing this battle. As I said earlier, the number of deaths according to the Ministry of Health in cancer are 22,000 per year over the last few years. Okay, so 22,000 deaths per year, if you divide it by 365, would come to about 60 deaths per day. Okay, so if you have 60 deaths per day, then really that is something, and you can really go down and divide how many per hour per minute. So really, 60 deaths per day from cancer alone is unacceptable. I think we have to reach that point and say, where are we missing it? What are some of the risk factors that we need to address? Is it our physical activity levels? Are there things in the environment, diet, and screening for these other things? The modifiable risk factors. The other thing I did not say was uh, we also have genetic predisposition. Like some families may be prone to certain types of cancers like breast. Or that one we may not have much control other than screening. But I think there's still a huge burden of cancer that we have modifiable risk factors and uh, we can work on them. We, it has been done before. Smoking was banned in public spaces. People will not think that was possible, but it was done. And it has reduced cardiovascular disease and to some extent cancer. But there are also other toxins in the environment that as people bring them up, once it is a national disaster, then there will be efforts and people will work towards them. And we will be able to get our numbers right, improve treatment centers, have centers of excellence. MTRH, for example, can be a center of excellence in Bonaro transplant, for example, Nairobi would be able to do some of those things that will go to India and the other centers of the country so that we know with this kind of diagnosis you can go to this facility and you'll get the care that you would in India or in South Africa or in the US or UK. So once it is a national disaster, then policy would follow in. So I think I would urge us, even as medical media Kenya, would add that voice of advocacy to the existing voices our patients and uh, patient groups, civil societies that are making the push. So I think I would also join Medical Media Kenya in saying we want to be a national disaster and it will have its effect in how we manage cancer as a country. So I think my final thought would be to thank you for having me here. It's been a wonderful time and uh, look forward to see how Medical Media Kenya will move forward. We believe that it has a unique voice in uh, bringing 
to the forefront the issues that we face because we sit in clinics we talk to these patients we understand the burden and the struggle they go through the families we give them that diagnosis and we can see them which as at the end of the day doctors are not just robots they're also animals and you're not treating diseases you're just you're treating patients you're not just treating cancer you're not treating thyroid cancer you're not treating lung cancer you're treating a patient who has lung cancer and that comes to mind so my thought would be keep ad- the advocacy you keep making people aware of this condition and not just cancer but generally all other important conditions that affect us and how best can we do in addition to the effort that's there how do we improve that effort and make sure that 20 years from now in 2039 you can look up and say in 2019 we did this and we can have strides in cancer reduce it from 60 deaths per day to even 10 deaths per day that is possible if it was done in HIV from 15% prevalence to less than 5 I don't see why it shouldn't be done for cancer so thank you so much Dr. Nathan for accepting to come to Medical Media Kenya we appreciate your the information that you given us and we hope it will go a long way to impact the lives of many people that are going to watch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad. Thank you so much our viewers for watching this episode. We hope that it will go a long way to impact your lives and we hope that we will continue to uh, interact even on our social media platforms and remember to subscribe to Paul Kiptis on YouTube and God bless you.